Hello and welcome to a slightly different episode of Resourceful. My name is Tom Manners, uh, but I'm certainly not the focus of this episode. Uh, earlier in this year, 2020, uh, Don Stewart passed away through COVID-19 and the mass world immediately responded online, showing an outpouring of emotion and love, the amount of work that he did for mass education. Um, his blog has been visited by uh, as many as 3,000 people a day, uh, and it's, it's making people think across the country and will hopefully continue to do so for many years to come. So uh, when he did pass and I created this series, I really wanted to do a focus on his website um, to, to learn more about it. And the recordings that I'm going to share with you today um, do that. I certainly learned uh, more about how to use the website and maybe how about how his insight and how his work um, it would influence me and go on to influence many others as well. So really looking forward to uh, the next hour or so. Um, but we're focusing on Don Stewart's blog, Median, and there's the, the, the link there. And the suggestion always is to go straight to that website. You can get his resources from elsewhere, but many of his resources and his thoughts that go with his resources are through that website there. I was fortunate enough to hear Don speak a couple of times, uh, and earlier this year, um, I, I, I train teachers and I, I said to my group, look, please come with me. And a couple of them were able to come with me uh, to see him speak uh, in Birmingham earlier this year in 2020. Uh, and I was really nervous. I, I had to go up to him and say, Don, do you mind? Uh, so I think I said, sir, uh, do you mind if I ask for a photo, please? Um, and he's very kind enough to, to join me in, and, and to take this photo. So really pleased that I approached him and just to thank him for his work uh, earlier this year as I had that opportunity. So in, in the next hour, I, I'm very fortunate to be joined. Um, when I first said I was going to do this, uh, Jo Morgan, a resourceaholic, immediately said she wanted to take part. Uh, and a colleague of Don's and friends of his as well, uh, Graham Charles, who worked at the Shaw Maths Hub, um, they both were willing to take part in this and, and, and share their insight and their thoughts into uh, Don's work. So hopefully you'll enjoy uh, the next hour. Um, I really hope you will. It, it was very fun for me to record uh, and very informative as well. Uh, and at this stage, uh, as everyone else would have been saying, uh, not just this year, but for many years in the past and many years to come as well. Thank you, Don. I'm joined once again by Jo Morgan, who was kind enough to join me on Resourceful, looking at her brilliant website, Resourceaholic. But um, Jo, thank you for, for joining me for this, because when we first met, I happened to mention that I was hoping to do something similar for, for Don's blog. And you immediately volunteered, actually, which is really very kind of you. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to talk about Don Stewart's blog, Tom. Like it is, it is one of my favourite things in the whole world. So it's an honour to be able to talk about it. Well, what we've, um, what I'd ask you to do um, before we start recording is uh, maybe have some of the tasks that you've used uh, and the ones that you particularly enjoy, and, and maybe just tell us a little bit of, of Don's influence on you as well. So uh, maybe we'd start there. Actually, the influence that his work and, uh, has had on you. Um, yeah, I think, I'm, I think like a lot of teachers, I didn't know about Don for the, at the beginning of my career. And I think I was probably about four or five years in when a friend of mine mentioned his blog. And I, 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 it was like a life changing moment for me, because from then on, I think he became the, the it was the blog I was then visiting most often in my lesson planning. Um, and I think at first, again, like a lot of teachers, I thought this is um, really high challenge stuff. So only suitable for some of my classes. But actually, once you get to know a lot of Don's resources, you realise there's kind of stuff for everything there. There's the, there's the fluency development, but all built into these beautiful, rich tasks, which are accessible. Um, but also there's a ton of challenge work on there. So if you're looking for something to stretch a class, like if you've got a, re a class that's really flying and you want some extension work, you will always find something on Don Stewart. But I think a lot of people only see that stuff and they don't see that there's actually something for everyone on there. So yeah, it's now, I, I think I use Don Stewart tasks every day. Um, and um, I absolutely, I just, I just, I feel really happy using them because I just, I just know that they are so beautifully crafted. Um, and um, I'll, I'll show you some examples of, of resources where, you know, he sometimes he just really makes my students laugh because he's got a real sense of humour sometimes that comes through in his resources. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Um, I'll just put it on for share ready. It occurred to me before I start recording, I haven't actually pressed that. So yes, we're going to see some of those in the moment. See, I, I'm the same as you. I didn't get into Don's resources at first. And this is the immature teacher that started. I look at the website, it didn't have answers. So therefore I didn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> and of course that's one of the, I, I, I assume, and, I, and I'm looking forward to interviewing Graham Charles who worked with Don for many years. I'm assuming it's because it had to make the teacher work. 
And of course, the longer I started teaching, I've realised that's a good thing. <laughs> well, I think there were two aspects to it. From my understanding, having uh, just once I saw Don say something which made me realise that it's partly because he didn't want his students going on his blog and getting the answers from there. You know, like, you know, it's, he didn't he didn't want them kind of um, um, Googling his work and then knowing all the answers. But actually, I think, yeah, you're right. The kind of um, the the good consequence of that is that if we're using a task with our students, we really should always do it in advance, even if we're given the answers. But, you know, we don't have time to do that. So, so no one ever does. And actually what happens is if you, if you don't do the task in advance of the lesson, normally it's about halfway through the task and you think, oh, this was a bad choice of task. Like, oh, the numbers aren't quite right for this class. Or, oh, this task is going in a totally different direction. Or, oh, that's a terrible question in the middle. And actually, um, so it's, it's a good thing, isn't it? That it's, um, we, if we want the answers for Don Stewart tasks, we have to work them out in advance. And that helps us to, gauge the level of appropriateness of the task Absolutely. so it's a good thing <laughs> so, no, I, I learned that lesson eventually and now, now I'm <laughs> fortunate enough to teach teachers that's one thing I remind them a lot of um, so let's see some of these tasks then Joe if you selected some um, if you should be able you should be able to now uh, share your screen or being well and I'd be interested to um, see which ones you've chosen yeah right let's see can you see that uh, we can indeed lovely and actually something else I should say just before I look at, uh, look at these with the answers um, in recent, I think a couple of weeks ago, Don Stewart's family has posted on his blog um, and they've put links to his um, all his files and presentations. And quite often in the presentations, he's got answers. So it is worth looking through those. That's like a little insider tip. <laughs> but still do the task. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. You should do the task. Right. So let me this. I just want to show you this one because I'm using it um, on Monday with my year nines. Um, and this to me, this is really interesting because this is I guess this is variation theory. If, if you look at what's going on here, this is factorizing quadratics. But he's kind of got the four different um ways of uh, the four different versions just using the same numbers so he's you know he's got he's got the 5x and the 6 in both of these but he's changed the signs up and i think it's it's just lovely because if you want if you want your students to practice factorizing quadratics you could give them just a whole load of practice questions or you could give them these four where they have to really think because sometimes it's going to be a six and a one and sometimes it's going to be a two and a three. And we know that's a really common mistake that students make is, is getting those wrong. So I really like this because you've got the practice. You've got the practice that all they have to think very carefully about. And then I love it where it says, do they all factorize? Because perhaps there'll be one or two here that doesn't. And it's good to give students questions where actually not all of them factorize. But then we've got that lovely question at the end. Can we find a similar set where we change that constant term to a 24? So that's where it becomes, it goes from practice through to a really rich, deep thinking task. And I think that's what Don Stewart does so well. You've got the fluency development and you've got the kind of deep thinking as well. Um, so I've not used that. Have you used this one before? No, but do you know what this immediately did? And as it should be for any of the mathematicians we're trying to build, I wanted to answer it. Uh, and and exactly. the thing of Joe speaking, pay attention, Tom, as opposed to <laughs> do they all factorize? And you can't help it. Um, and, and, and if you do, and that's I, 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 certainly from the times I heard, heard him speak, it was the exploration, it was the discussion, it was um, the interest in, 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 in not just seeing 10 questions. You can have 10 questions, variationtheory.com, for example, which I know you're a fan of as well. It, it's a great website, yep. but it can just be a load of questions sometimes, and people won't, unless you investigate it properly. Where this is an opportunity to investigate and you're, you're given that op um, opportunity to think and, 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 and encouragement to think if you like and anything yeah, there's that, that, there's those, those prompts so it's yeah. like variation theory.com but we've got the prompts and we've got yeah. i mean this is this is one slide from a i think it's it's four or five slides in this particular set um and so there's so there's a bigger set of questions that go with it but they're all along this theme of kind of can we generalize like um you know what if, if we know there's a, tw a 24 at the end what could the numbers be um the, what could the coefficients of XP is really interesting so you know I, I'm using I don't necessarily use his tasks in the way he designed he wanted them to be used and I suppose we, I can't read his mind I don't know what I don't know what he imagined me doing with this task but I'm looking forward to trying this one on um, Monday I'll see how my year nines get on with it um, and I just I've, I've chosen this over just a big set of mixed factorizing oh, questions no so that's a, ni that's a nice one awesome. um now this one's quite well known so I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm have you seen this one before this is uh, quite a famous no, I, one I, I, there was this and the the orange one. I, I remember seeing shared uh, yeah. once that uh, uh, being talked about. So, um, but the discussion that comes from this, um, and you've got to create the question from yes. the question almost. <laughs> it, it, it's really nice thinking. 
Yeah, it's nice. And, and it's and it's I think students find this harder than I expect them to when I've used this one in the past. You know, I've always it's one of these things where it's like, oh, yeah, I, I, that's obvious to me. But it's it really takes quite a lot of thinking for students. And it's only it's only sort of four questions. But actually, this is quite a, a lengthy task because you've got the kind of units angle where we've got 24 kilograms. But, you know, it's been expressed in grams there. What happens if we divide grams by uh, the gram, the amount of grams of flour we've got by the amount of grams of flour it takes to make one cake. Well, we know that that's how many cakes you can make, but that's actually quite complex. Um, and I know I've seen a number of tasks that have been created since this one that are sort of based on the idea. And there's there's some similar ones um, uh, from some maths hubs and from NECTM who like very similar to this. I think mm. a lot of people really love this idea of we'll take something where we normally just work forwards and let's just work backwards. And it's 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 um, something we do a lot in maths, isn't it? When when we want to challenge our students. So as soon as we want to add challenge in, let's work backwards because it, you know it is quite uh, conceptually tricky. Um, but yeah, this is a lovely one. And, and, you know, D, for example, takes a lot of thinking. Um, and so this, you know, classroom discussion around this is really rich. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd show that one because it's a lovely example. Um, I, that one, like I say, is quite a well-known Don Stewart task, but it's surprising that I still meet people now that have never even heard of Don Stewart's blog. And I think, oh my God, how can you not use it? So there will be lots of people who've not seen this one. And so I thought that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a winner. What a great task. I've never used it in class though. Let's have discuss it. I wish I had because the discussion around that and hearing the yeah. people's talk about so that's happening to this and then you multiply that must be really rich um i must get around to using that one yeah no i've only used it as a whole class discussion and i think perhaps next time i use it i'll have students working on it in pairs or something i mean i and i would like to say i'd go and circulate around but i can't circulate at the moment but you know that would be <laughs> the ideal would be to listen in on those conversations Right, let me see, um, see what else I've got. And again, this is one of my all-time favourites. I love this task. And this is one of a series that look like this. Have you used this one before? This series, not this exact one, but that series of, uh, of going back to the centre and which yeah. ones are related, which ones aren't. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I think the, the thing I find really special about this task is that I feel like I can use it with so many different year groups. So this year I used it with a year eight class as a... I used it as like a stretch, but the whole the whole class did it. So we we done some work on expanding, and I um, and simplifying. And I and I put I, I showed them one example, and I had it on the board. And it wasn't this particular one; it was an earlier one in the same task. And and I said, right, who can spot one that doesn't simplify to give that uh, expression in the middle? And they all just got it wrong, you know, <laughs> they were just, it was like crazy. They were like putting out their hands so confident that they knew the answer. And, and it was just so interesting because it was pulling out misconceptions left, right and centre. Um, and so I, I did that with the whole class and it was a fantastic discussion. And then I gave them uh, some of these to try because there's a whole load of them. I think there's eight of them in his, uh, on his blog. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always fascinating because it, it really is, he, he really knows what the misconceptions are here. Like on that, uh, the bottom left one there, he knows that, that they've got a negative outside the bracket and a negative inside the bracket. He knows that going to get that wrong and you know it's, it's really um it really does just draw out those fascinating discussions um so i used it with year eight this year but i've also used it in the past with um year 12 in their in their first lesson of the year where i want to check their algebra skills and i used it once when i took over a year 11 class and so i didn't know how strong they were at algebra again first lesson um it's a great way of assessing their algebra skills yeah. because like you can it really just you know can they simplify can they expand and it really shows what they can and can't do so it's a great task that is a good one as you said the idea of introducing that to a year 11 trying to pick up knowledge from year 11 without giving that simple let's do a load of questions this brings out loads of facts that's, that's a great choice thank you yeah absolutely because i never would i mean this was this was a top set year 11 that i took on but i had no idea how good their algebra was and i thought i can't just give them some simplify you know like expand these brackets simplify because i didn't want to patronize them in case they were all awesome at algebra so i give them this and it's a really engaging activity no matter how good your algebra is like this is engaging for, an, for, for me to do so therefore it's engaging for my really bright year 11s but also allow me to assess them so yeah that's why i think it's it's this this is a magic task it just works with anyone lovely um i've got a couple more so um i just wanted to show an example of a geometry one okay. um and because he's got loads i mean he's he spent so long um on his making his resources look beautiful um and when i saw him present at a conference once he asked me to take more pictures during the presentation to tweet them because he was so proud of the work that he that he was showing on the screen because it took him so long to produce these beautiful resources. So you look at this one, you think this is just stunning. He must have spent so long on it. And um, 
This is an example of one that very much to me is extension challenge work. So this is sort of the kind of thing I might give a real kind of grade eight, nine kind of class. I might have a sort of top set year 11 or something who are just flying ahead and really, really strong. And, you know, this has got a lot of challenge in it. And I think, like I said earlier, people think that Don Stewart is just about tasks like this and it's not. But there, there is, you know, if you want stretch and challenge for your class, then his blog is full of it. Um, so, yeah, this is obviously angles and polygons, but it's... Um, it's beautifully challenging um, and also beautiful to look at. So, I haven't yeah. seen this one before. And, and, and as you say, there, there, there's so much going on. Um, oh, they're interesting so tasks as well. They're not, um, and the, the, the idea of resilience and you'd want group, dis well, you'd want paired discussion or table discussion if we were allowed to in the environment we live in, et cetera. You wouldn't want a child to sit there by themselves on this. You'd want them to say, what do, what do we know? Therefore, is there anything else we can know? What, therefore, what else do we know? Oh, that might fill the gap. Again, the conversation, yeah. the rich conversations with a task like this. And it, it, yeah. it, it, these are great extension work. And extension work was probably always my, certainly when I started teaching. And again, like yourself, didn't know about Don's blog initially. Um, mm. The extension work was always the hardest thing to find. And you end up making the mistake of giving them a different topic because you think that's harder stuff. Whereas this mm. is the clever, harder stuff that, that, that just makes them, makes them think. <laughs> Absolutely. And because and the good thing, is, I just find that it's so practical for a teacher to use. You know, you, you can kind of print that two to a page. So you hand out this little A5 thing. So someone someone who needs some stretch work, it's just easy, easy to use. Don't you? They all fit onto a slide so perfectly. And apart from the answers not being there, these are so useful. <laughs> you have to print, make a personal note for yourself, don't you? The second time you use it, you've done it the first time. <laughs> Keep them there ready. Oh yeah, I mean that's a good. That's actually a really good tip for teachers. Like you work out the answers and on a piece of paper, and then you next year you're going to, have to do it again. So yeah, it's just such a good idea to sort of take a photo of those answers and then save it in the folder alongside the lesson, yeah. or, or even you know put or even write them on your slides, and then next year if you're going to use the slides again, they're still there. But yeah, I think in the first few years of my career, I think I was just doing it on paper and then thinking, oh, I'll I'll use them next year. And obviously, I don't have that piece of paper next year, so that's that's a good practical tip. Um, let's see what have I got two more I want to show you so this one I only wanted to show you because I wanted to mention this sort of funny side that he puts into his um or into his resources all the kind of interesting things so I mean this is just a, uh, a set of questions on on speed mm -hmm. but I just love the animals he chooses and you know how he says um like I've never even heard of it like a sailfish the fastest fish <laughs> like, I yeah. love the way he does that a snail and the question seven a snail works hard works to travel <laughs> and, and like he does this quite a lot he talks about well, I, have, I had a Don Stewart task the other day with my year eights we were doing I think we were doing proportion and it was a question about a pregnant alpaca and it, oh no, it was a, it was a percentages <laughs> question and it was talking about someone who bought a pregnant alpaca and then had to sell it at a discount and it was trying to do a percentage change but the thing is it's just funny enough to make the students kind of smile and giggle a bit but not to destroy the lesson yeah. like with, with sort of you know like it's not that it's not that hilarious but it does it does make students laugh a bit and it really kind of brings a smile to everyone's face and I love the way that you can really see Don's personality coming through in his resources lovely and the last one. So the last one I wanted to mention was a directed number task. Now, what's um, what's nice about this is I've used this for key stage four groups, so say for year 10 or year 11, when I, like I was saying earlier with the algebra, is when I want to check how good they are with negatives without patronizing them by just giving them some very straightforward work out these, these calculations. Um, and because it is a, a richer task, you know, we are just doing negative number calculations, but it's a rich task because they have to fill in these boxes. So it's a bit more thinking. Um, and, but it also gives me a really good chance to assess their understanding of how to work with negatives. So yeah, this is the sort of thing that um, you could either use, say with a key stage three class as stretch work. So, you know, they've learned how to deal with negatives and then this, this comes as kind of a lovely extension task, really um, sort of nice level of challenge for them. Or you can use it with a much older class um, to get them to practice and to assess them. So it's just one, it's just very typical of a Don Stewart task where um, it's, it's, it's engaging, but it is, it is essentially fluency and, you know, practicing skills, but it's really engaging and um, enjoyable for students. Well, I've just finished directing them with my year eights and I went straight to Don Stewart. Now, because you mentioned it, I'm going to share the one that I use because I know I have to, I know I have to have it on screen. Okay, um, let me let me stop sharing. I think that's right. but I think I've right. just taken it back. This one here. Oh uh, nice. They're all five times six. 
Um, and I think what it did nicely was show that a negative times a negative is a positive. There's lots oh, of I've never seen doing. this. That's awesome. It took me a minute to see what you meant by they're all five times six. That yeah, is well, so exactly. but but even that, the first time I saw it, I remember being quite lazy and going, oh, whatever. Um, and it's got negative, it's multiplying by zero in there as well. Uh, it's a pra- plenty of practice of multiplying negatives, but it proves the fact that the sum of every box should be 30. So therefore, a negative times a negative must be a positive and so on and so forth. And so that's awesome. I cannot believe I've never seen that. That is absolute genius. I mean, I'm sure. I, no, I'm certain I'll take this from Dom. That's fine. <laughs> I'd be really worried if I didn't now. I'm absolutely certain I did. Um, but, you can always yeah. tell a Don Stewart resource because he uses Unicase, doesn't he? So at the top left where it says product tables, yeah. where there's no capital letters there, you straight away <laughs> know it's Don Stewart. That is uh, absolutely beautiful. I don't know how I've never seen that. And that is genius. I love it. it yeah, it took me a minute to see what you meant. They're all five times six and hmm. they're all going to have the same total. That's uh, it's just a, yeah. So the, the, the introduction of that and even so this one here, for example, on the number five, eight plus negative two is the six. And, and just making yeah. sure the kids see that bit yeah um yeah. this has so many links to other maths as well and, and the area model so you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a fan of this slide but as you mentioned your director number one i wanted to make sure i i shared that one as well um joe thank you very much for giving your time and sharing uh some of your thoughts there uh and some of the tasks you've used um i'm going to be interviewing uh graham charles from the shaw maths hub who worked with don for many years um, i'm looking forward to as you mentioned some of the presentations um and the other tasks that have just been loaded in the last month this last couple of months so uh hopefully i'll investigate those with him uh, but uh joe any final words before i uh, thank you for taking part no just thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk about don stewart because like i said i it, there are there are teachers who aren't familiar with his work and i do think it's kind of life-changing stuff for a math teacher like it really does um, it really just ri- enriches what was going on in your classroom as soon as you start using Don Stewart. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to more people about them. No, and as always, Joe, thank you for the work you do. You're, you're, you're brilliant and I don't think you know it enough. So you, <laughs> thank you for your time. Cheers. Thank you, Tom. I'm now joined by Graham Charles of the Shaw Maths Hub, who had um, a working relationship and a personal relationship with Don, who's going to talk us through some of his favourite resources from the website and also how to use the website. Also, maybe give us into a uh, bit of insight into Don the teacher as well as Don the man. So, Graham, thank you very much for taking the time to join us. No, hi, Tom, and thanks for allowing me to come on. And uh, yes, you're, you're right. I've been really fortunate having moved to Shropshire 17 years ago that, I, that straight away I had, I had a chance to, to meet Don. Uh, basically, Don was uh, the, the mentor, the subject mentor for my wife, who was doing uh, maths training at the time. And um, yes, yeah, so he was one of the first people that I met when I moved to the area. And the thing is that Don, Don has worked in, in Shropshire and Telford and Rekin for, well, since the, the mid 1970s. Um, phenomenal, really. Uh, the, locally, he's just so well known as an inspirational teacher, uh, assistant head teacher, um, advisory service for both Shropshire and Telford, and, and also incredible that it is his consultancy work with Median. And it's just fascinating the way that Don's career went that typically a lot of people do, do the teacher bit first and then perhaps move on and move out of the classroom. But Don has always integrated the two. He's alternated between the roles. He's never done a role for more, more than five years. He's always switched <laughs> within five years. And just, just amazing that when he was a teacher, he was getting people together to work collaboratively. And when he was an advisor, he was making sure he was going into the classrooms. He was bringing people into classrooms to come and t- come and see lessons. And really, you know, math, maths education, learning for children really is at the heart of what, what Don's all about. You mentioned collaboration there, and I think his resources really show that because it's not supposed to be a pick up the sh- pick up off the shelf and get on with his work. Um, it, that's not how he's presented it. It's not what he wanted to present it. It's about collaboration and thought b- b- before uh, beforehand, isn't it? And I know, I know before we started recording, you um, used a sentence along the lines of Don wanted people to think. Absolutely. Don was thoughtful to people, but he wanted people to think. He wanted teachers to think. He wanted children to think. And any of those activities, whichever stage you're at of them, he gets you to think. You can never think, oh, well, I've, I've done the first few. I'm just going to follow this same uh, procedure for the rest of this, of this work. Uh, he, he certainly inspired people to think 
because he put a lot of thought into all of his activities. And it's just just lovely, really, that, that uh, I mean, he, he worked and most of the things that are on there have been trialed and refined because they, they've been used in classrooms. And it's just brilliant the way that he's, he's done that all, all the way along, really. So. So, yes, yes, really fortunate to, 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 to have been able to have the pleasure of working with Don. And then as a friend, we'd always meet for, for maths meals or music or normally a, a combination the venn diagram the intersection of all three that <laughs> would often appear in our in our meetings so uh, so yeah it's a pleasure to, to share a little bit of insight really then about about how some of the some of the uh, tasks came about and just some of the thinking behind them i suppose I'd, I'd, it'd be good to start you mentioned there about don as a teacher because of course um occasionally there are there is a little bit of insight a little bit of guidance but um those locally that, that had the pleasure of seeing Don as a teacher were amazed at how well Don engaged children. Whichever group he was teaching, he had children with hands up, mini whiteboards, which, whichever way of communication, they were all wanting to have a go. Mm -hmm. it, was, it seems quite simple, but actually I've not seen really that many people do it as, as effectively I've heard about Don, that he would ask a question, he would often have whole class situations and he would ask questions and wait for response and just simply say thank you and get another response. He never looked at, uh, at giving any, any uh, other feedback other than just thanking people for their contribution. So everyone, every, all the children felt valued and they, they really enjoyed hearing the contributions from others. I, and I suppose it's that uh, ultimately he, he led to them being able to critique each other's responses he really loved when we when we chatted about um, lesson study in Japan. He really loved that that expression, the the, the productive struggle, and I and, and I see that he he recognised that that's in effect what he was doing in his classroom, a productive struggle where there was certainly challenge and then an opportunity to critique alternative solutions. So yeah, really really great. Well, you're going to take us through the blog in a few moments and maybe how best to use it. Uh, now you were telling me he set this up um, some 13 years ago. Is his kind of place to store resources um so it, 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 certainly i was i was using usb for years so he was ahead of me um, <laughs> but this is where he would keep his keep his stuff and then of course it's now being shared to everybody else and there's a lot of new resources uh, and uh, presentations that have been shared since his passing as well so you've logged on brilliant can you take us through and uh, show yeah, us what you know yeah well as, as you say don don set this up for just to, to keep his own resources so uh and obviously, it's um, it's sort of um, got to be become more well known. He occasionally mentioned it. There's never been any big promotion or big marketing, but um, I know that in in recent times, this may have been typically three thousand visits a day, or certainly on a on in term time, uh, three thousand visits a day. And there's lots of people who will say, "Well, this is this is my first port of call. It's reliably good." Um, we there's variation theory. We know that he gets people thinking and um, just just thought would start with the home page, because in terms of legacy, you and I, Tom, and I'm sure many people watching this will will just be so grateful of all the work that Don's done and he's sharing it freely. And it's really good in terms of his legacy that if this can be shared and so that in five, 10, 20, maybe 50 years time, if people can still access this. So it's really important there if any if anyone's linking to the website or the, to the blog, really good if you can direct them to the home page. We, we talked earlier about some of them are on perhaps Google Docs. And whilst sometimes it's nice to go directly, I think it's really important for people to have a chance to see see what else is on there and explore and that, that bewilderment and excitement that many, many of us have, have got. Mm. And um, of course, recently um, uh, Don's uh, family had shared a message there. And, and as we know, um, Don's wishes and Don's family's wishes about the the blog and his materials remaining freely available to all. I suppose it's 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 important that that's respected, and so that any links or any routes to the blog, again, are, are there's no charge that that everyone has has free access. And Don loved it when he would have messages from people from all over the world, um, and, and of course the charity which which is there. Uh, you know, it, it, there's it's lovely to see there's hundreds of people that have donated and and lots of lovely messages about the, how, how people have been inspired by Don. But he really loved it when people got in touch with him. Messages from from all over the world and from from countries where maybe there were there weren't many maths education resources. So that really sums up his generosity and how it was it was freely available to all. So um, so the first one that I'd like to have a look at is in the 
the angles in polygons. And I'm going to go uh, what might be a, might seem like a long winded route. However, you do get a real appreciation of the aesthetic uh, beauty and journey of, uh, of getting there, uh, as well as one or two bits. And just it's a joy to scroll down. And often, if you're not going the direct way, you may well uh, end up looking at other activity. You're thinking, wow, look at these. I mean, you took so much care and pride in, in everything that went on there. As I say, everything's reliably good. So this first thing I want to point out is sometimes people say, oh, I found I, last time I couldn't find it. So just again, this link to older posts. Um, <laughs> it took me a while to realize that. And then you realize there's actually a lot more in there. So I'm going to refer back to an activity which, uh, but whilst doing this, you can see, you can see there's absolutely loads in this section to an activity from a, a meeting from a few years ago where a colleague had, had got a, a, a year nine group. They said they were, they were struggling. He was struggling to engage them. And the next activity was, was going to be measuring angles and looking at angles and in polygons. Mm -hmm. And was really quite worried about how, you know, thinking, well, these children have visited this so many times. So, so you know, um, I'm going to have to revisit this topic again. So um, conversation with Don and then later that day, uh, typical Don that pops up, um, that pops up an activity that's, that's there, that's ready to use. So um, as I say, we've, we've scrolled a bit and um, here we go. I think we're, we're virtually in the, in the right zone now. Um, I mean, just, oh no, no, we've got a little further to go. So that's just highlighting. So what Don said was that, well, rather than just measuring the angles, um, just having a, a perhaps a, a, an inspiring sheet, just to make those connections straight away. And so uh, in having those connections, um, what, you, what, what this teacher found was that the, 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 many of the children were really, well, they were inspired because of the variation and because there was only really one activity there was only one that um sorry there was one uh, oh sorry i heard it tom there was one bit that there, there was only three angles to refer to okay. and so where we've got uh where we've got here i have here, to say right? by the way the older the older posts i didn't know that and so no, you you, okay. you just could done one example of, of all those new ones that have popped up <laughs> yeah. so uh whilst so, you are so, looking so, 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 here great we go. this is this is this is where it is i won't okay. click on because i'm going to refer to it but essentially this was the starting point, this one here, where with this sheet, children would, the, the year nine class would measure the angles. OK, obviously, there's a lot of angles on there. Um, some children would quickly realise that actually there are only three different angles on there. Um, other children may recognise the structure of the maths and may quickly come up with shortcuts and maybe find them without measuring them. However, it obviously gives the chance to go back to measure to check. So it's by combining those things and that variation that, I mean, how long would it take uh, that some, some of the children found out very quickly that there were only actually three different angles. Mm -hmm. So it didn't actually take them very long to fill in many of the other ones. Others, it took them a, a quite a bit longer. However, the realization that there's more to this than just measuring angles um, was insightful. And then it led very nicely into the, the next section of work that they, would, they were going to be doing. And within this, um, you know, we can see on this one here, the, uh, the can you see? Um, so some prompts then. So having done that as an initial activity with measuring angles, okay. all sorts of ways of looking at connections. And again, as I said earlier, if Don, Don as a teacher would ask uh, children for their thoughts and thank them and then get a real insight from the whole class, ga gathering all the thoughts of the class. So it's just the way that he's connected things together so so wonderfully. Nice prompt there, isn't it? With the, uh, certainly looking at the, uh, you know, as every person watching this, and if, they, if it's a maths teacher, they will be trying to work out what the angles were. And they, even while you were talking, Graham, I can't help it. You've got to try and work them out quickly. And then you see the 30, 60, 90, I hope. I think I got to <laughs> um, But then just, these prompts enable those conversations as well and it's that support for the pupils who will look at it and go it's just a mess um and so this is really sensible step as opposed to what shapes can you see which is still a fair question this is this is just a little bit more direct it helps that conversation to the pupils and it almost becomes a bit of a checklist as well yeah and it's, it's just lovely that what was a what was a group of, of at the time low low attaining students um, not particularly motivated in their, in their maths, um, but that they were really inspired. And it was lovely that Don, Don had a strong sense that every child could achieve. Mm. And he wanted to make sure 
that there were opportunities, whichever class he was taking, and he worked in a variety of schools, whichever class, he made sure that there were opportunities for challenge, even for the lower attainers. He, he, mm. was, he, was, uh, he felt that was really important, that they didn't miss out. This, isn't, this, this blog isn't just for the high, the high attainers. This is a blog for, for all. And, uh, and so occasionally you find ones that work perhaps at the, at the lower levels or the early years. I think in the, fr the front page it says maybe 10 to 16 or 10 to 18. So Dom did work with primary colleagues and he was keen to say, I'm not, I'm not a primary teacher, but he, he worked with primary colleagues to develop things. But say these, these just work so, so wonderfully. No, there are times where he's given, you mentioned that if you pick up uh, resources from, say, a Google Drive, you don't necessarily see the pedagogical notes. Uh, and I know that we're going to look at uh, Orangia in a moment's time where there are some pedagogical yeah. notes. Um, I wondered for that one, is it sometimes on the PowerPoint there'd be notes at the bottom or just sometimes you would put them with the slides, just sometimes you wouldn't? What have you noted? Yeah, it varies. And, and, and if there are notes, they, they do tend to be within the blog. Mm -hmm. so, so, it's, so it's really important that, you know, I say the, for the legacy that, that people refer back to the blog. And we, we like to think that, you know, Don's blog will be top of the search engine so that many people, if they're hearing about his work, can just find it straight away. So it's so it's really important that we that people do refer back. And Don's family are more than happy for people to, to share and to make sure that things are freely available. So any 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 links to it are, are very welcome. Well, you've um, I asked you um, to prepare for today, and you chose the orange year, which um, so I, I, you've, I I've got it loaded ready. So let me just share my screen. Uh, firstly, going to the blog. Because to start there, here is an example of um, where the PowerPoint is, but also he's, he's some pedagogical notes here. Students should be given the opportunity to debate with the teacher remaining silent or encouraging other views to be aired. I wonder if that is right. Anyone disagree? C kind of supporting what you said earlier on here, he wouldn't say that's right, that's wrong. He would thank them and want yeah. further conversation to be taking place in the classroom. Absolutely. And I, and I say uh, locally, lots of there's thousands of people that have worked with Don and then you can meet a department maybe of 10 people and they've all worked with Don at different stages. <laughs> but uh, but for, for people who've not had the chance to work directly with Don, it's really useful to get an insight to Don the teacher. So thank you for, for picking that out there, Tom. I think that's a really valuable point. So uh, so thank you. Yeah, so I, the, the thing I'd like to just refer to within this again, rather than it being, you know, my interpretation of, of Don's activity. Um, uh, so this, I think this one was a, a meal, a coffee and a cake meeting. That then we went into That's some great. hats. It went, uh, yeah, we went over lunch and uh, we, it was just lovely having a chat with Don, effectively about multiplicative reasoning. And um, we were talking about Don and, and, and I'd been doing some work with, with, um, primary and secondary children working together uh, and primary and secondary teachers working together. And one of the things we said was about how multiplicative reasoning, how important it is that it can be accessible um, in, in, within primary and uh, in, a, in, I suppose, in a multi-sensory approach. And we talked about taste. We talked about mixing paints and looking at the, the visual and how many brilliant opportunities there are, because we know how important the, uh, how much it underpins the, the, the GCSE, perhaps as much as 80% of, of GCSE, foundation tier GCSE questions underpinned by multiplicative reasoning and how many how many children have, have not got a secure and deep understanding. So anyway, we had a lovely time. We, we talked at all sorts, quite common that lots of activities relate to food and drink. And lo and behold, later that evening, uh, Don has done further research. I'd gone and watched some rugby that day and then Don, Don had gone away and he'd worked on this further and then that evening um he'd, he'd found and put this together i know that he's acknowledged the original source but it's just brilliant i just think i mean it's just how engaging is this it's just brilliant for children you know you're asking the children well which um which one does that look like if you were making your squash which one would it look like and you know if somebody else was making it for you which would it look like and i just love the way that he, that he captures he he, he captures um, interest, he captures the engagement. And therefore, once you start looking at some of the ratios that come in later on, again, the children are, are engaged. And I, don't, I mean, I know you've seen this one, Tom, so I don't know if there's anything you want to say about it in particular. I know you're well, familiar. You're well, familiar. I, I imagine this one is, um, again, great conversation. As you said, food and drink will always get the pupils interested. And there's a conversation, even going back to this, this slide here. Well, why do you like the strong orange? because it's got more orange in than water. And, and actually you're, you're building up the reality of what ratio is. 
straight away just through conversation just through something that everybody recognizes and i think everybody at one stage was a fan of his squad um so then you look at this and you, you, you're then beginning to get into the maths through a very obvious conversation which is really really nice and you know, again there's no ratio representation here it's not needed at this stage if you do you know bring it in too soon it's all visual it's all something we can relate to and later on you can bring in the one to well one to three or one to two pardon me um one to three and so on and so forth so i, I what i like about this um and i don't know how many slides it is until you actually just, if i go to here but yeah. it takes a fair number of slides doesn't it to start actually introducing that yeah the notation which I think is a really good, good way yeah. and as you say whether maybe some of the children may may use that language but it's certainly an, an activity that uh could be accessed at, at, at different ages. I mean, and and some will take a multi-sensory approach and they will taste it. I suppose you can see it visually or, or can you? I mean, if there are subtle differences, they might look the same and they might taste the same. And that's that's really valuable too, you know. So so how how acute are our senses at being able to check this or whether whether the maths <laughs> will will uh, highlight a subtle difference. So uh, I'm imagining so, yes, the blind just, taste test, you know, when you, they, they did the Coke versus Pepsi thing. Uh, yes. You say which one is orange? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, it gets it gets uh, it gets interest. It stimulates interest. And uh, I know Don did a lot of work um, on on ratio and proportion, and did lots of presentations. So th those sections of his blog are, uh, are are incredible. I mean, you could you could take days just to look through them yourself. And as you said earlier, I mean, he. he uh, he, he these aren't just to pick off the shelf I suppose it's really good for the teachers to explore for themselves it's quite common the variation quite common that some of them lots of them have the same answer perhaps except one <laughs> so we can come up with those questions what, what's the same what's different mm -hmm. and why and really really look at the, the structure of the maths so uh, so yeah so um I say without uh, without spoiling it <laughs> for others if you haven't used this um do 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 enjoy for yourself as a teacher and, and for your pupils interestingly just to point out that it's the fact that it's become when we look through the national curriculum and being able to generalize um it, and that's a higher order skill but it's a mathematical skill that we want to get to isn't it nice to see that towards the end as well the fact that, that, that yeah. that's been introduced in that conversation I can be related back to me. even these, which you know, it, without the words which is orange here at the yeah. top, it would maybe look like a, a, a drill sheet. But there's actually yeah. because the context has been introduced, that is a whole lesson. But this is a whole lesson, which, which is not in there sometimes. Um, and I, I think I, I've had made a mistake looking at Don's resources at times where I look at them and I'm, I, I haven't managed to think the whole bigger picture around it. I've just seen one resource or maybe one question or one prompt. Uh, and I think I occasionally struggle with that a little bit, but then if I find it through the website, I'm more likely to see the preceding slides and get more of a sense of, okay, this is the build up to, because this slide here means nothing without the previous slide. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you're, and you're right, sometimes, sometimes the activities might only be part of the lesson and sometimes they might yeah. end up being several lessons and it's not always easy to gauge that. However, the, the richness is in the responses and that interactive teaching that comes from those. So, yeah. So thank Lovely. you. Thanks very much for your insights on that, Tom. No, it's, it's nice. To, and, and that's what I like doing this series. I'm enjoying it. I like talking about maths. I like talking about maths teaching. It's fascinating how people <laughs> respond to stuff. Um, yeah. you, um, I know we looked at one, uh, from the list, the angles in polygons. Um, yeah. we, I know, we mentioned orange here. Um, I think variation was, was variation the next thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I, I'm just going to uh, draw attention to this because um, we're very fortunate. Don, Don was obviously, a, well, Don was a, a local leader of maths education for nearly 50 years in these areas. And um, he, we're fortunate that he, that he did some um, work groups for the hub. And last year, Don, um, I asked Don if he ha was happy to lead a workshop on variation theory for all of the secondary specialists for, for Shaw Maths Hub. So um, uh, when I met, what I did, so uh, all of our secondary specialists recognized that Don's work had great, uh, great variation within it. We had many examples and this, the sense was we just wanted Don to, to just provide a little bit more insight about some of his examples. So uh, when I met Don uh, back about, well, about a year ago, um, he said uh, to me, 
he really wasn't very sure about very he didn't really know much about it um and that maybe he wasn't the right person so when i when i showed him i said well don these are these are the materials that these teachers who are leading work with others are uh, really inspired by I could tell he he knew a lot more than he was willing to let on. He wanted to find out what I knew about it. I'm sure. So anyway, um, we we uh, we we eventually got to a, a to a deal. Don was going to lead a 90 minute workshop on variation. And the thing I'd like to just highlight, I am not going to run through it because, as you see, 217 Ooh. slides. Don was thorough. Now in that 90 <laughs> minute, <laughs> in that 90 minute workshop, um, obviously whizzed through some. But I mean, he, he prepared this, I, I sense with a view to, to having it available for different audiences. Um, it took him much, much longer than, than he'd originally anticipated, but he said, don't worry about that. I absolutely love doing this. So um, again, uh, if, if anyone is interested in, in looking at variation, there is a 217 slide PowerPoint going right back uh, well, looking at it internationally, but he looks at the history, looks at how it might look in key stage one. There's a phenomenal amount in there. So there's lots of people looking into to variation and uh, yeah, I just wanted to share. Um, and at various points, you will see that there are some of Don's slides and some of Don's work. Mm -hmm. And those were ones that were selected because we wanted to have an insight from Don as to to why he set questions up in that way so as i say i mean you you can get a real sense here here we go so these these were some of the ones that were picked out here so uh Indeed. so great use of variation and uh i mean i know it's something you're very passionate about tom so mm -hmm. uh, just just questions like this um which which really highlight that uh yeah making those those connections and looking at the structure of the maths and how nice just to see the occasional uh, mixed number and fraction in there, just from and, and the fact we've got two two brackets, we've got two sets of brackets to consider, and, and lovely. Yeah. So that's that's really just a bit of a, a, a whistle stop tour. Um, I suppose just to, to to finish, really, I just want to highlight a couple of other things. Uh, so one of them, uh, as as um, the message from from Don's family uh, highlighted recently, um, Don wanted some additional materials to be shared, mm -hmm. and so uh, most people are very familiar with with the, the, some, of the, some of the bits we've looked at. But there are two sections that were added about a month ago. Um, so additional education resources and a number of presentations uh, where Don was leading at conferences. So um, without going into any in particular, um, just to, to highlight these, these were only added on the 9th of October. And um, as I say, within each of those file structures, there are hundreds, probably thousands of, of different additional um tasks ideas resources so uh so enjoy enjoy for those watching <laughs> enjoy the journey and exploring those if you haven't already um and then the other thing i was just going to mention is um we're looking at um obviously we're behind all of these resources don did lots of preparation and we've got uh at the moment we've got all of the well i've probably got about 50 folders um, so here we're looking through one at the moment, 50 folders, probably 100 paper folders of Don's written notes um, behind everything on the blog. And so we're looking for a permanent home for those so that they can be used by, you know, by current teachers, by future teachers. Um, possibility of ATM and MA if, if the merger there have, takes place and that's that's one route. So there's various ways, but certainly want Don's family um, they're really keen for these to be used, but we agreed that it would probably make sense that they're available as a collection rather than just being dispersed. Um, so one of one of the things we've been looking at over the last few months is just trying to, where Don was working on collaborative projects, just sharing those materials. So we've managed to locate a number of people and, and share them with them. But if anyone out there is watching and was working with Don on a project, a collaborative project over the last year or so, then, then get in touch through you, Tom, and uh, we'll be happy to, to share the work that perhaps you were doing with him. So uh, so great that the, the, the Don's family and, and obviously the wishes from Don, it's just brilliant that his legacy is there for, for all of those who, of us who are using it now to carry on and for future generations of maths educators. So, you know, we're, we're already thrilled that, that that opportunity will remain there for everyone. Well, Graham, um, thank you for giving the time up to discuss Don's work and give us a bit more insight into, again, not only his work, but him as a, as a gentleman, as a, as a teacher, 
as a passionate maths educationist. Um, and I, th I said this with Joe, and I'll, I'll say it with you. I, I encourage people to really take their time over Don's website because I know when I started with it, the answers weren't there. I turned away, okay, and I didn't give it the proper thought because maybe, may, well, maybe it's just that maybe it's the job that we're in sometimes that we're we're, we're rushing. Uh, but the truth is, uh, um, you've used the line really nicely. You want people to think, and if we think about it, and that's as teachers before our lessons, we think about it properly. We plan for the questions that are coming up. We know we can be better prepared and have better answers and therefore respond more appropriately. But also we can enjoy it a little bit more. Absolutely. There are hidden depths, enjoyable. There? there are hidden. And if you start exploring them for yourselves, you'll be in a better position to know when using it in the, in the classroom. It's, yeah. it's, it's delightful. So, so yeah. But thank you very much, Tom. Really enjoyed uh, chatting with you. And obviously it's always a pleasure to chat about Don's work. So thank you. Thank you, Graham.